ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله يا على الصلاة يا على الفلاح يا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشار الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار A few months ago I was asked to do a khutbah in a masjid in a different city on this very same day and I took that khutbah and we agreed on the date of doing the khutbah on this very same day, today. Two days ago, I checked to confirm the khutbah that I was supposed to deliver. And I found that the brother had sent me a message straight after he had sent me the first message. But I never saw them because I was busy. And he said that, that khutbah had been taken. Today's khutbah had been taken by somebody else and he offered another date. And this is two days ago. So I said to him, SubhanAllah, I just saw your message and am I still doing the khutbah this day? I don't know if I'm doing it or not. Can you tell me? So he said, no, the khutbah has been taken. We'll give you another khutbah for another day. And this is two days ago. Yesterday, the brother texts me again and he says to me, the khatib isn't able to do the khutbah today. So can you do the khutbah? And this was yesterday. Before he texted me asking me if I can do the khutbah today, I had already made arrangements of something that I was going to do after today's Juma khutbah, which meant that I wasn't able to go there and do the khutbah. And so subhanAllah, when he texted me and he mentioned this to me, I thought about whether I should go or not. I was contemplating. To the extent 
that as the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, would do and would say to his companions, as the companions themselves would say, that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, would teach us istikhara in all of our affairs. He would teach us to make istikhara in every single thing, in every single thing of our affairs, everything. And he would teach us istikhara just like he would teach us a surah from the Qur'an. Meaning, it was emphasized that whenever a person would decide to do something, he would make istikhara. And so I made istikhara whether I should do that khutbah or not. And now I'm telling you this because there's some fawaid and there's some benefit in it. So I decided not to take that khutbah. I was meant to come here today and sit where you are sitting right now and listen to the khatib. And I found out that the khatib isn't well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he cures him. So it just happened today that I got the call that they need someone to do the khutbah today because the khatib isn't well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ That they plan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of plans. You know, we make plans and we note them down in our mobile phones. We note them down in our diaries. And we make plans for the next four months, for the next six months, for the next year. What we're going to be doing? Where are we going to be going? What must we're going to be visiting? Yet subhanallah, when a person makes these plans, plans will change. Maybe some of you didn't intend to come here just like I didn't intend to do the khutbah today. Maybe some of you were intending to go somewhere else. Maybe some of you weren't expecting certain things to happen today in the morning when you woke up, but they happened. وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ They plan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself plans. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of plans. The messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam, when he was in Mecca, calling the people to Islam, calling the people to Tawheed. For 13 years he called the people to Tawheed. And the situation became such that he wasn't able to stay in the city of Mecca anymore. And he decided that he had to leave the city of Mecca and make hijrah and go to the city of Medina. Before he left, he was making plans and he was making arrangements. When he would go, how he would go. And he was waiting for the right opportunity. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh had no idea that he would be accompanying the messenger of Allah sallallahu Yet he himself made plans. He made arrangements. He prepared a riding beast. He prepared provisions for the journey. Even though he didn't know he was going to go with the messenger of Allah sallallahu But he had that hope. He had that hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah azza wa jal will make him a companion on this journey with the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam prepared provisions. He prepared for the journey. He prepared the route. He prepared and hired a guide to take him and Abu Bakr radiallahu an on this journey. He made all of these preparations. And who was he? The best of creation. Muhammad, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best and greatest of creation. The one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what he was thinking. He knew what he was thinking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا Verily, we see you, O messenger of Allah, looking up into the heavens. And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hasn't said anything. قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ you turn your face to the heavens. So we're going to give you the qibla which you're pleased with, the qibla which you want. Meaning we'll change the qibla from Jerusalem to the city of Mecca to the Kaaba because this is what you want. Even though the Messenger of Allah وسلم, never said anything, he never even supplicated for this, he never asked for this. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what he was feeling. He knew what he wanted without him even thinking about it. So this man, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the most, he would give him whatever he was even feeling, whatever he was thinking, without him even asking for it. You know, when you know sometimes what a person wants, 
because of the way he's looking at it. Maybe your watch, maybe something that you have. And you see that he wants it. You know straight away. And so you give it to him because you love him. Because you want him to have it, because you want him to feel that happiness. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, was like this with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Yet the Messenger of Allah والسلام, still made preparations for this journey which, is, which he was going to partake in. He still made arrangements, he still made preparations. Even though he was under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though he was under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though no matter what happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would protect him. And this shows us the importance of planning and preparing. The importance of making that effort. Because if a person makes that effort, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me and I will remember you. A person needs to take that step to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His happiness upon the individual is something which only Allah knows who He's happy with and who He isn't happy with. And because of His happiness for an individual, that makes us up happy, for Allah, happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and happy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Radiyallahu anhum wa radu anh. Allah says that He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is pleased with them. And they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a slave's pleasure with his Lord doesn't come first. Rather, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the slave first and foremost, and then the happiness and the pleasure of the slave to his Lord comes second. So how do we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us? When a person does good deeds, when a person has taqwa in his heart, he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single one of us should make preparations. Every single one of us should prepare things just like the Messenger of Allah والسلام, made preparations in his life. Before he left the city of Mecca, he never made an announcement. He never told anybody that he was leaving. He went in the darkness of the night. He prepared his, uh, his animal. He prepared his route. He took a guide. And this shows us the importance of planning. When a person plans, then he puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not a case of just putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not making the effort yourself. A person has to make the effort. That's part of his tawakkal, of his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, he was asked by the companions whether it was better to tie up one's camel or to keep one's trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whether it's best for a person to make preparations and to prepare himself and to do whatever he can, or whether he should just put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Messenger of Allah والسلام, he said in a hadith in Tirmidhi, he said, tie up the camel and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do both of these things. Don't sit at home expecting for things to happen when you're not making the effort yourself. Don't expect money to fall from the skies if you're not going out and about working for that money, making an effort for the money, that you, for the, for the money and the wealth that you expect to come to you. On top of this, brothers and sisters, we have to look at what plans and what preparations we're making. You know, maybe we're thinking in six months' time, I'm going to travel here. Maybe some of us are thinking, where are we going to go in the summer holidays? Where am I going to take my family? What am I going to do with the kids? This week, which was holidays, maybe some of us thought, what are we going to do in these holidays with my children? What am I going to do? Where am I going to take them? How am I going to spend this time? And so we have plans with regards to our families. We have plans with regards to our work. We have plans with regards to where we're going to do, what we're going to do. Yet how many of us 
make plans with regards to our deen? How many of us make plans with regards to our acts of worship? How many of us have goals and have objectives and have targets related to our own deen? This dunya is something which is temporary. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, he said, everything in this world is cursed. This world and everything in it is cursed, except for the scholar and the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, sometimes we live in a bubble and we think that pure happiness is in this world. And we don't want anything bad to happen. And when something bad happens to us, we become depressed. We become upset. Life throws things at us and we become upset, we become miserable, we become depressed. But what does a person expect in this life, which the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said is cursed? This world and everything in it is cursed. So a person is to be expecting anything to happen in this world. He is going to be tested. Things are, are going to happen to him, which he's not going to be happy with. And it may be a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the slave. This world is temporary. Imagine driving on the motorway <clears throat> and you're at night and there's some cars in front of you and there's some cars behind you. And there's a car which has been traveling with you for a long time. You recognize the car. It's a black BMW. You recognize the car. It's like as if it's going the same direction you're going. And it's traveling with you. Sometimes you're in front of it, sometimes it's, you're behind it. And then that car takes an exit. And that car leaves. This is like the dunya, brothers and sisters. This life, we're going to come across people that we're going to know. And they might accompany us on this journey. But they're eventually going to take their exit. They're eventually going to leave. They're taking their exit. They're taking their own route. They're taking their own journey. And they're going to go wherever they're going to go, whatever their destination is. Yet every single one of us is going to have our exit. We're all going to have our exit that we're going to take at one point or another in time. The question is, what provisions have we prepared for that exit? What provisions have we prepared for that ultimate journey which is going to come to an end? And for the next journey which is going to start inevitably? What provisions have we made? Abu Darda radiallahu an, one day he was looking at the Kaaba. He was in front of the Kaaba and he was with his students. And he was looking at the Kaaba and he told his students, he said, Do you make provisions whenever you travel? Do you make provisions whenever you travel? And they said, Yes. And so he said to them, Then why don't you make provisions? for that ultimate journey that you're going to partake in, in which there are no journeys after it. It's the ultimate journey. The journey of life itself. How many of us are making preparations for the hereafter? وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ We plan and we make plans and you know, we make arrangements. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is also making plans for us. And we have no idea what his plans are. We have no idea where we're going to be today, let alone next week or next month. So a person needs to make the necessary arrangements. A person should pray as if he's never ever going to pray again. Some time ago, one of our Yemeni brothers, he died here in Birmingham while making sajda. He died while prostrating, subhanAllah. A young brother in his late 20s. He died while prostrating. And this in and of itself is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That man when he woke up, that Muslim brother, we ask Allah that he grants him the highest parts of Jannah. When he woke up that day, he had no idea that he would be praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would be doing sajda. He would be making his adhkar. He would be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for things while he's prostrating because the closest a slave is to his Lord is while he's making sajda. 
He had no idea that he'd be making sajda, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for things for that very same day, or for the following week, or for something in his life. Maybe he wasn't married, maybe he wanted to get married. Maybe he wanted a job, maybe he wanted to complete his studies, or so, or it could be anything. He had no idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to take his soul at that very moment. He had no idea. A man of 29 years old. Sometimes we live and we think we're going to live forever. But we have no guarantee when death is going to come to us. Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans. Wallahu khayrul makirin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. There is no one who is a better planner than Allah azza wa jal. Sun Allah alladhi atqana kulla shay. The creation of Allah, how Allah has manufactured everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected every single thing. Every single thing in this universe is perfect. Right down to the plant which grows. Every single thing is under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. We were talking about making plans and planning things for the future. And many of us, we plan things with regards to our families, with regards to our careers, with regards to other things. But how many of us make plans for the akhirah? How many of us make plans for the day of judgment? How many of us make plans and have goals and objectives with regards to our acts of worship. Sheikh Uthaymin, rahimahullah, he said once that if a person intends to do a good deed, فَلْيَفْعَلْ وَلَا يتردد, Then let him do it and don't hesitate doing it. Don't delay that good deed. Because you don't know when death is going to come to you. You don't know when that deed that you do is going to be the last deed that you do in your life. That Yemeni brother, he had no idea that that salah was going to be his last salah. A person has no idea. A person has no idea what's going to be his last deed in his life. Many of us have intentions of doing good deeds. Maybe some of us had the intention of giving wealth, giving charity for the sake of Allah. Maybe we've had this thing in our minds for the last week, for the last month, for the last six months. Maybe we've intended on giving charity. Why haven't we given it? What has stopped you from giving this charity? Why haven't you given this charity, brothers and sisters? What are you waiting for? Don't delay in doing good deeds. Sabiqu ila maghfiratin min rabbikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Race for the forgiveness of your Lord. Fastabiqu al-khayrat. Race and compete with one another when it comes to doing good deeds. Don't race with one another with regard to the worldly things. Because that's going to be never ending. You're never going to catch up to the dunya. The scholars, they would say about this world, that if a person catches up to this dunya, if he tries to run after the dunya, the dunya will run away from him. And he will never catch the dunya. He's always going to be running after it. And the one who stays away from the dunya, the one who avoids the dunya, the dunya is going to try to run after him. He's going to try to run after him. He's going to try to entice him. Every single one of us has intentions to do good deeds. And there's no better time to do good deeds than right now than today. Don't delay in doing your good deeds, brothers and sisters, because we have no idea when death is going to come to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Qur'an. And he said, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ He said, worship your Lord until certainty comes to you, until yaqeen comes to you. The scholar said, what is this yaqeen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about? What is this yaqeen? They said, yaqeen here means death in and of itself. It's talking about death. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ 
worship your Lord until death comes to you. Because death is certain for every single one of us. It's going to take place. This is why it's called yaqeen in this ayah. Did the messenger of Allah sallam know when death was going to come to him? He didn't know. He had no idea. So why was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying this to him? To remind him and to tell him that he needs to continue to do good deeds. He needs to be continuous with regards to his worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Non-stop. Continuously. There's no break for us. And I advise myself before I advise anybody else. We don't have any breaks. We don't have time to relax. This dunya is something which is temporary. The Messenger of Allah himself was told to worship his Lord until death comes to him. We don't know when death is going to come to us. So a person when he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of his ability. Do whatever he can do. Whatever is in his capacity to do. Whether it's giving charity, whether it's fasting, whether it's praying, whether it's reciting the Qur'an. Whether it's providing for his family, helping his fellow Muslim brother or sister. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Wallahu fi awni abdi madam al abdu fi awni akhi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps his slave so long as the slave helps his fellow Muslim brother or sister. So many of us can do good deeds. What type of good deed that's for you to figure out for yourself? There may be certain deeds which are easier for you to do. Certain things which you're able to do, which another person might not be able to do because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with something that he hasn't blessed other people with. And this is for every single one of us to sit and to contemplate and to think about. What can I do to invest for the akhirah? What can I do? So when I take my exit, I've got provisions for the akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us from those people who plan things and also who do things for the benefit of ourselves and so that they add it to our scale of good deeds on the day of judgment. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu wa sallam ala bina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله يا للصلاة يا للفلاق قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Straighten your rows, straightening the roses from the perfection of the prayer, so make sure your rows are straight. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سيقول السفهاء من الناس ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم التي كانوا عليها قل لله المشرق والمغرب يهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون الرسول عليكم شهيدا وما جعلنا القبلة التي كنت عليها إلا لنعلم من يتبع الرسول إلا لنعلم من يتبع الرسول ممن ينقلب على عقبيه وإن كانت لكبيرة إلا على الذين هدى الله وما كان الله ليضيع إيمانكم إن الله بالناس لرؤوف رحيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قد نرى تقلب وجهك في السماء فلنولينك قبلة ترضاها فول وجهك شطر المسجد الحرام وحيث ما كنتم فولوا وجوهكم شطره وإن الذين أوتوا الكتاب ليعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وما الله بغافل عما يعملون ولئن أتيت الذين أوتوا الكتاب بكل آية ما تبعوا قبلتك وما أنت بتابع قبلتهم وما هم بتابع وما أنت بتابع قبلتهم وما بعضهم بتابع قبلة بعض ولئن اتبعت أهواءهم من 
بعد ما جاءك من العلم إنك إذا لمن الظالمين الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته just a few announcements firstly please don't act generously on your way out the mes- this message relies on the will of Allah Azza wa Jalla and your financial support so that we can keep providing the activities for the community inshallah. Tonight's Urdu lecture will take place after Salat al-Isha. Also, the Saturday lecture is entitled At-Tawabun, The Ones Who Repent and will be delivered by Sheikh Abu Usama inshallah. Sisters will be enrolling for the new Tarbiya courses Bowed Down, an eight-week course teaching Salat and its Fiqh and Islam Essentials, a 15-week course which covers Essential, essential Islamic lessons. Enrollment will take place this Tuesday, the 24th of February, from 10 to 12 p.m. via door E. Places are limited and offered on a first come, first serve basis. Also, JLMCC Young Ummah is proud to announce the launch of a new exciting course for 10 to 16 years old, year olds entitled On the Run Navigating Through the Early Teens with Surah Al Kahf. It aims to address some of the challenges and issues that are faced by our younger brothers and sisters using Surah Al-Kahf as a guide. This four-hour course will take place on Sunday the 8th of March from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
Registration is through Eventbrite. The link is on the Facebook page. Also, our food bank service urgently requires food donations. We are currently running low on cooking sauces, nappies, squash drinks, cereal, coffee and ladies pads. Please leave your donations during office hours at the message reception door C, inshallah. We're also looking to recruit volunteers to help with the running of the service. Please leave your details at the office. Also, Birmingham Healthy Minds have set up an awareness stall to promote their services. For more information, please do approach them. Also, as you may be aware, there is a petition against the banning of halal slaughter. The deadline for the petition is this coming Monday. We do encourage you all to take some time to sign the petition and spread the word as this is, the only, is, as this is only in our benefit, inshallah. Once again, please donate generously on the way out. What is our khair?